Good morning. This is Pastor Claude White, um, Star of Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. And we again are um, probably may see this on Facebook or whatever. Um, but we're coming to you today once again to uh, give you a word concerning the uh, principles of prayer. Uh, today we want to uh, deal with the importance of prayer and what uh, God really expects of you in the realm of prayer. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, at uh, Luke chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. This is a uh, parabolic word which Jesus gives to his disciples concerning prayer. And we are his disciples in this 21st century. Amen. And the 21st century Christian must be no less a Christian than the first century Christians were. Uh, but we need to know what the first century Christians knew. Uh, we, ought, we, we need to have faith even as they had faith. I'm going to begin reading at the first verse and... Uh, we will uh, then turn and discuss it. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man, Amen. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Amen. Jesus ends the parable and the parabolic message with a question. And... Um, an answer and a question. He says, I tell you that God will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Amen. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? Shall he find men and women devoted to the ministry of prayer? You see, prayer is not simply a ministry, but it is also an, uh, a responsibility. One of the great responsibilities of the church is prayer. Praying one for another and praying as the uh, Lord said for us to pray. Um, also, Last week, we were dealing with Luke chapter 11 and also uh, Matthew chapter 16. I want to take you back to that 
And I want you to understand that we're going to be dealing with these two passages uh, in chapter 8 and also in Luke chapter 11 where we have the Our Father prayer or the model prayer. Amen. Now notice Jesus tells uh, uh, us the parable and the purpose of the parable is to impress upon the Christian disciple that there ought to always be prayer. And notice that Luke term, Luke's terminology, Luke, Luke says that men ought always to pray. He says, and he, Jesus, spake a parable unto them to the end or with the purpose that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always, always to pray. So then if men ought always to pray and not faint, then the Christian disciple ought always to pray and not faint. Not only ought he not, ought, ought he to pray, but he is obligated to pray. And he is obligated to pray in the manner that Jesus said. And uh, we're going to discuss those manners um, or those principles. Number one, he ought to pray with the knowledge that he is talking to God Almighty that he is talking to God the Father. He's talking to the creator of the world, the creator of the earth, the creator of mankind, and that the creator dwells or resides in heaven. And uh, as we said on last week, in heaven there is no sickness. So we need God to move upon the earth where there is sickness, there is no uh, fighting, uh, there is no war in heaven, there uh, are no diseases in heaven, but we have fighting, we have war uh, in uh, uh, the earth realm, and we need God to move in the earth realm. Now, God does not move haphazardly. God created the church through Jesus Christ. And the church has the purpose of fulfilling the ministry which Jesus began, the ministry of the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. So God waits on the church to move or the church to pray. And so it is important for us to understand that God is in heaven in the, uh, the realm of the heavenlies where there is no disease, there is no uh, unrest, no political unrest or any other kind of unrest. Uh, and, and, but, but God recognizes that we have a need and God wants to send us help for every need that we have. God wants to, to um, solve every problem. God wants to deliver you and I from every situation, but we must pray. And this is the reason he says, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Uh, because God moves when we call upon him or when we ask him. So when we read on last week, Matthew, it said that the Lord was teaching. He said, and it said, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, 
when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. And John, as John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. So one of the things that we ought to pray about is the holiness of God. We need to magnify God uh, in our praying. We need to recognize the awesome uh, power of God. And we need to recognize that he is a holy God. And when we go before him, I think I said this on last uh, Sunday, that we should go to him with clean hands. Now, every one of us has done something that we ought not have done, and we call it sin. Uh, and sometimes uh, we need to wash our hands. Now, the way we wash our hands spiritually is through the blood of Jesus. We go to him and we ask for forgiveness. We confess our sins. We confess our faults. Unconfessed sin is sin that is not forgiven. So we confess our sins and we ask for forgiveness. So we go to a holy God we confess our sins, we ask for forgiveness, and we repent. The word repent means to turn away from your sins and turn unto God. And so as we, when we are praying to the, the God of creation, who is a holy God, we need to come to him holy. And we come to him holy by recognizing our faults, our sins, and confessing them and pleading the blood of Jesus. We say to him, Father, you, you sent your son to die for our sins and to remove our sins. I confess this fault or that fault, I confess, and I ask you to forgive my sins. Now, in my asking for forgiveness, I need to be ready to repent, to turn away from sin. See, if, I, uh, if I'm asking for forgiveness, but I know on tomorrow I'm going right back to do what I should not have done yesterday, then that's not true repentance. And so we have a need to truly re repent. And when we are in a state of repentance, having confessed our sins, we can then come boldly before the throne of God because we have Jesus Christ. Another thing we need to recognize is that we were baptized, amen, you and I, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Son's name is Jesus. So we were baptized into Jesus Christ. We were baptized into the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we are going before God, we are also able then to come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and, and we're going to say a lot about that name, Jesus, in dealing with our prayer and our prayer ministry. But you cannot go to God and recognize him as Father if you have not been baptized in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is the one who said to us, God is our father. And we come through him, through Jesus Christ, the son of God. We are baptized into Jesus Christ. And we also become one with the son. And we go to him in our prayer as the son of God. So God no longer sees you as the sinner but he sees you as his child. And that is, the way, that is the relationship. So we want to establish relationship with God through our prayer life. And this is what Jesus is telling us. We want to establish a father-son relationship with the father. And so he says, when you pray, Say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Your name is holy. Now, I wear the name then of Jesus Christ because I've been baptized into Jesus. And because his name is a key to opening the doors of heaven. See, the name of Jesus is respected in heaven. The name of Jesus is not only respected in heaven, it is honored in heaven. His name is trustworthy. God is able to trust his name. And therefore, when we use the name of Jesus, we are using uh, our elder brother or our Lord, our Savior's name, because he gave us that name to use. And that name opens the door to heaven for us. So hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. We are to pray for the kingdom to come as it is in heaven. So let it be upon the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven, thy will be done. God's will. God's will is that we should be in good health, that we should prosper and be in good health. Uh, James the apostle and the brother of our Lord said that this is the will of God for us, for the church. It is the will of God for all mankind, but especially for those who are members of the body of Christ. Uh, we are to pray that the will of God is done in the earth realm. Now, when we pray that prayer and recognize what we are praying for, we have Jesus's word that our prayer will be answered by God. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we have a number of prayer. We have the prayer of deliverance in there. We have the prayer of petition in there. We have the prayer of intercession in there. Amen. And, and we, we have uh, the, 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 the prayer uh, of, of, of authority. Amen. And we're going to talk about authoritative prayer. Hopefully, we'll talk about that next week. But the greatest ministry of the church is the prayer ministry. You know, the preaching ministry, the preaching of the gospel is important. But guess what? Prayer is important for the ministry of the preaching of the gospel. Now back to the parabolic teaching of Jesus. 
Notice that he said that there was a city, there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow, and the story is really about the widow. There was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now, Jesus is telling us that this widow, she was without a husband. We know that her evidently for her to be a widow, her husband had to have died. And uh, evidently she was a widow indeed. So she comes to a man who is a judge who does not fear God. We got a lot of those on the, on the, uh, in the court system today. They do not recognize God and they don't definitely don't uh, respect men. So she comes to a judge who has no reverence for God and no regard for men. And she says to him, avenge me. She tells him what her problem is and what she needs him to do. In other words, she's bringing a suit against somebody. Amen. Wow. Against an adversary. And she says to him, avenge me. And the Bible says, uh, Jesus says uh, to us that this judge would not avenge her from the very beginning. But afterward, he said to himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. In other words, she kept going. She was faithful in her petitioning. She didn't stop because he said, I'm not going to deal with this matter. She kept petitioning. She brought in one petition. He said no. She brought in another petition. He said no. He, she evidently kept bringing petitions before this judge. And finally, up after one of those petitions, she said, he says, because this woman continues to come to me, I'm going to give her what she asked for. Now, two things that Jesus is telling us. Number one, we need to be faithful in our prayer life. Amen. Prayer is not a hit and miss thing, you know. Um, it, it is a hit. And the get up and swing, 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 swing uh, until you knock the, the, the ball out of the park. Amen. So we pray until we get an answer. Uh, now, there, there are some people say, well, after you pray about it, you don't need to have to go back. Well, sometimes you may have to go back. God wants us to recognize that our prayer life is necessary and that sometimes we need to labor in that prayer. And sometimes we need to fast. Sometimes there are things that we've got to get rid of in order for God to answer our prayer. Uh, sometimes we need to uh, have a battle of endurance against the devil. Amen. We are praying against an adversary. Uh, and the chief adversary of mankind is Satan. The reason we have all of the hell that's going on in our uh, communities and across the nation the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers of darkness in high places. 
So we recognize that Satan is busy, but we need to be more busy. We need to be busy with our prayer life. And the, 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 the parable is told to us that we ought to always pray and not quit, not stop. The faithful prayer ministry is the prayer ministry that is continued from day to day. We continue in our prayer until we have an answer. I said one of the things we want to do in our prayer life is building a relationship with God, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Amen. We want to build a relationship with Father. We want to have a father-son or father-daughter uh, child relationship with God. And the way that we do that, we have to recognize that whatever God is all about is what we ought to be all about. We build the relationship with God based on our faithfulness toward him. If God said it, that ought to settle it. God, I'm going to give you a good example. A good example is God said that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, a female and a male, a male and a female. Today, we have in our system, politically correct system, we have mandated or uh, given a privilege to two men to get married and two women to get married. God never intended such a thing to happen. And I'm not going to even call uh, any, anybody's name that this uh, abomination happened uh, under. But we need to recognize that political correctness has no part in your relationship with God. In fact, Political correctness can send you straight to hell. God mandated marriage between a man and a woman. And this is the reason we have the Bible to teach us biblical principles based on God's truth. God made Adam and Eve not Adam and Steve. Amen. And so we need to have faith based on what God said. Many times I have preached to, uh, to people and, and talked to people and uh, some of them say, well, you know, the Bible was written by man. Yeah, in every other book that you read was written by some man, but it does not negate the fact that the men that wrote the Bible were inspired by God. And they were men chosen by God. Now, it talks about, in the parable, uh, it talks about the widow continuing and, and, and troubling the, the judge, this un, and we, we know that he was an unrighteous judge, but he could be moved by this woman steadfast coming to him continually. He said, well, she's going to weary me out. She's going to wear me out, and therefore I'm going to give her what she has asked. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And then in verse 7, he says, And shall not God avenge his own elect? Now that word elect means chosen. Amen. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Are you chosen? 
The chosen are those who have set apart themselves. They've been called and they've decided we're going to do it God's way. I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to be faithful to God. Are you the elect of God? Jesus says that God will answer prayer for his elect. He says, shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Amen. If you've been asking God to do something, don't stop. Don't resolve in your heart, well, God wants me to be sick. Amen. That's the first lie. God doesn't want you to be sick. Don't believe the devil's mess. Amen. God does not want you to be sick. Resolve in your heart that God wants me to be well. And if he wants me to be well, he can make me well. He can make me whole. Or he can make my child well, or he can make my son well, or my father, or my mother, or sister, brother, or whatever. God wants you to dwell in wellness. Do we get sick? Sometimes we do. But that's not God's will. We are battling against an adversary. Amen? Now, he says, the elect which cried day and night unto him, <clears throat> amen. Listen at that again. And shall not God avenge his own elect which cried day and night unto him? Day and night means continuing in prayer. Have you continued in prayer or did you faint? Did you say, oh, well, it's no use. I resolve I'm just going to be sick. Or I, I resolve I'm just going to be poor from now on. One of the biggest tales that we've been told is that God wants you to be poor. And God loves the poor more than he does the rich. Stop that tale. God loves all men, but he especially loves his elect, those who have decided to live for him. And so, crying day and night means continually to put your petition before God continually. And he says, Though he bear long, in other words, God may wait a while before he answers your prayer. This is simply developing our faith and our strength toward him, our uh, perseverance. It, 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 it gives us perseverance to, to pray long. It develops our patience. So whatever is done in time is done patiently. And so we call upon him until we get the answer, the results that we desire. He says to us in this parable, we ought always to pray and not faint. Don't give up. Don't fall out. That's what that word faint means here. Don't give up. Don't fall out. Don't allow yourself to doubt that God means you well. God means you well. God has a plan for us and it is a good plan. It is a fruitful plan it is a righteous plan. 
and one that blesses not only you, but it blesses the very heart of God. Sometimes what is required when we are asking God for something, and, and it seems to be a long time coming, is we have to start to just believing that we already have what we ask God for. If you're asking God to make you well or to make you whole, you have to start acting like God's already did it. He's already done it. You put it in your mind, in your, in your mind, because in heaven, it is already done. What you want is to get that thing that's already done in heaven manifest in the earth realm. How do you do that? You begin to think that what's done in heaven is already being manifest in the earth realm because God wants it to be so. But God needs you to recognize that he wants it to be so. And God needs you to open your hand willingly and openly and say, here it is, God. I'm, I'm ready for it. Lay it on me. Amen. And so today we recognize that in the in the our father prayer is authoritative prayer, petitionary prayer, intercessory prayer, amen, prayer of deliverance. When we say deliver us from evil, amen, prayer of deliverance. All of those ministry prayers are incorporated in the model prayer. And so sometimes we're going to be dealing with one area of prayer for a longer period of time. Uh, our relationship prayer, the prayer that we, 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 we are um petitioning God for a better relationship with him. And we have to begin to act like sons and daughters of God. You cannot go around and be hell on wheels and think that you're going to develop your relationship with God the Father as a son of God. Amen. You be, you need to become heavenly minded. Amen. And you can't be too heavenly minded. There used to be people I knew that you say, don't be so heavenly minded that you ain't no earthly good. Guess what? The more heavenly minded you are, the more earthly good you will be. Because the earth needs to hear from somebody who has a heavenly relationship with God, who has a relationship with God that's not tarnished by continuous operation of sin. We need to recognize that as God is holy, he desires us also to be holy. Amen. Thank you very kindly. I'm going to uh, ask you to join me once again on uh, next Sunday. Um, and uh, at that time, perhaps we will begin to talk about authoritative prayer. I hope you've learned something that you and I ought to always pray and not faint. Don't give up. Whatever you're praying for, don't give up. Don't give up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you for your manifold blessings upon us. Thank you, dear God, for your word which you've given unto us. We pray, oh, Father, that you will develop our hearts, that we would uh, be to you true and faithful sons, true and faithful children, 
that that we will acknowledge you in all of our doings even as the psalmist says that we will bless the Lord at all times and your praise shall be continually in our mouth let it be so and we call it to be so in Jesus name amen God bless